Hi everyone, good to see you all again. Welcome to my session on tie and dye. Bandini is an ancient Indian technique of tie and dye textile decoration done by plucking the cloth with the fingernails into many tiny bindings that form a figurative design. The term Bandini is derived from the Sanskrit language which means to bind or to tie. Today, most of these Bandini making centers are situated in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Sindh, Punjab regions as well as in Tamil Nadu where it is known as Sunguri. Today, let's watch a demonstration of some of these interesting Bandini techniques that you can easily create at home. Stripe Technique Stripe Technique is another interesting tie and dye technique where you cleat the fabric in a certain way to do this tie and dye technique. So let's see what all supplies we need for this technique. You will need a starch removed white cotton fabric, a ziplock cover to save your fabric after dyeing, a plastic pin cover to cover your work area, a big bowl of water for dampening your fabric, two cups of water, one for washing your brushes and one for adding with your color, a color mixing palette, flattened down brushes from Faber-Castell, some rubber bands and Faber-Castell fabric paints. These paints are versatile. They can be used on ceramic, wood, tile, canvases, uh, metals and as well as all kinds of fabrics. They come in many shades. There are many shades available here and they also have a pearl color in this set. So you can use these colors on any other surface to work on. Right now we're going to use it on our tie and dye technique. So let's get started. As a first step, you're going to wet our fabric. This fabric is a white cotton fabric which is starch removed. You can soak the fabric for half an hour to 45 minutes in a bowl of water and the seizing, the starch will be coming off. You can wash it, dry it and then it's ready for us to do the tie dye process. So to start with the tie dye, you have to first soak the fabric in water like this and squeeze off the excess water. The fabric should be damp so that it takes up all the paint that we're going to apply there should not be dripping water so ensure that you squeeze off and take away the excess water nicely. Once when this step is done, you can open up your fabric and you can start pleating the fabric. For the pleat technique, for the getting some stripes on the fabric, you need to pleat it in a certain way. You can either pleat it like this like this or you can pleat it like this also. So you can do either ways of pleating. So once when you finish pleating like this, we will put a rubber band to secure the fabric. So let's pleat it and get it ready. Right now I'm pleating it like this and then I'm going to fold it into equal half like this and then I'm going to use a rubber band to hold it in place. Nice and tight we will be knotting the rubber band like this. Same way you can give an interval and you can have another rubber band there. Like this, you can knot how many ever knots you want and get it ready. I have now taken Faber Castle acrylic paints in my palettes. I have now taken these four colors for this design. I am going to use orange, lemon yellow, Persian blue and magenta. I have already mixed some colors and caps. So I am just going to do the last one. I am just adding a few drops of water to get the required consistency so that we get a flowing consistency on the surface. Once when your paints are ready like this, you are ready to apply the colors. I am going to start with my darkest color for this activity. For this part, I am going to put blue followed by uh, magenta, then yellow and then orange. So let's get started. Starting with blue, I am just going to take it in my flat brush and start applying it by pushing in the color using the dabbing technique. Press it hard so that it goes into the fabric, it should penetrate. You can turn the fabric and work on the other side also. 
or you can finish one full side and then flip it over to do the other side. So like this, after you press it down, the color has gone in. Wash your brush. And then move on to the next color. The next color is going to be magenta. So I'm just going to apply magenta to my damp fabric like this. Flip it over and then apply magenta here. Push it down nice and hard so that it penetrates the fabric. Wash your brush. Go on to the next color. It's yellow. I'm using lemon yellow here. Pushing it down with my flat brush. Washing it. Moving on to the next color, which is orange. So once when you finish applying the colors for the entire fabric, this has to be left to be soaked for two to three hours. So save it in a Ziploc cover and leave it to set. So the applied colors are now done. So we're just going to Open a Ziploc cover and save the fabric in a Ziploc cover. Leave it to set for two to three hours. If you notice, we have completed our dyeing process and it's now dry. I have removed it from the Ziploc cover and I'm going to remove the rubber bands. As I remove the rubber bands, the fabric will be slightly damp. It won't be fully dry. So let's remove the rubber bands to see how the pattern has come. So we folded it into half, right? So when you open up the fabric, it will be with this kind of a pattern with a lot of stripes on it. Okay, so this is how our stripe technique in tie and dye will be coming. In the same way, I have done the stripe technique on a white cotton t-shirt. I've used the fabric colors to work on this t-shirt and then once when after 24 hours we can fix the colors by ironing the fabric on the reverse side. This will help to fix the colors permanently and then always when you wash it you have to use a gentle machine wash with mild detergents and always have a shade area to dry the fabric so that way the colors are more durable on the fabric. I hope you enjoyed my technique on tie and dye with the stripe technique. Thanks for watching.